In this tutorial we're going to show you how to set up WP Supercache's advanced settings. Here you can see that we're already in the WordPress dashboard and we're currently in the settings panel for WP Supercache. So we've already set up the easy settings earlier so you can check that out in our previous tutorial if you'd like. Uh, but what we need to do here is click on advanced and there's quite a few options to go through and if caching is new to you a lot of them may be a little confusing, maybe even a little bit confronting for you, but we'll try and keep it as simple as possible. So the first setting is cache hits to the website for quick access. It's recommended and it's already turned on and you should definitely leave that turned on. Next we can choose how we want to actually cache the website. It's currently set to use PHP to serve cache files. You can also choose from mod rewrite, which is an Apache module. So just note that this will only work with Apache. Now you can use whichever you'd like, for the most part, if this is new to you, you should use PHP to continue co uh, serving cached files, but you can also choose mod rewrite. Uh, mod rewrite is definitely the fastest way to do it, and it's reasonably easy to do. Uh, so it's up to you what you want to do. Mod rewrite's the best though. And now we just move on to some miscellaneous settings. Uh, the first option we have is to compress pages so they're served more quickly to visitors. In a previous tutorial, we've already covered compression, and Ideally, you'll already have that turned on, so if you follow that, leave that on. Alternatively, you can just check the box to turn it on here. Next, we have not modified browser caching, which will return a 304 result. Now, it's disabled by default. Some hosts will have problems with it. Uh, the best thing you can do is turn it on and just try. Uh, you won't know if you're going to have troubles with it until you try, so definitely consider doing it. I'm pretty confident it'll work on my server, so I'm just going to leave that turned on. Next we can choose to not cache pages for known users. It's recommended, uh, ideally thinking that a known user is someone who will be visiting the site regularly so they'll probably want to see the most up-to-date version so we can just turn that on. Again it's a recommended setting. Next we can choose to not cache pages with get parameters. So it's probably good just to leave that off. It's not really required because they are the requests for pages that will run less frequently than people just coming to your website and visiting posts and reading and so on. You can then choose to make known users anonymous so they're served super cached static files. Uh, if you're going to use this you don't really need to use the two options above don't cache pages for known users uh, but you can use them in conjunction with one another. The next setting is regarding the cache rebuild. So it's turned on by default and it's recommended that you turn it on and I strongly recommend leaving it that way. Essentially what this does is that while a new cache file is being generated, it will serve a super cache file to any anonymous users. So definitely leave this one on. The next setting we have here is not really regarding the performance of the website. It's just, it just inserts a little link into your footer saying that you use WP Supercache. It's up to you if you want to turn that on. I like to leave it off. Now we're moving into the more advanced settings. Uh, we can enable dynamic caching, which it needs to be used with either PHP or Legacy. It won't actually work with mod rewrite. So if you want to use this, you need to use PHP or Legacy. So if you're just leaving it on PHP, you can enable this. It's kind of complicated to explain exactly what this is. So we're not going to cover that in this tutorial today. You can of course check the FAQ as it notes if you would like to learn more about that. Next we can choose mobile device support. Now you need an external plugin or the right theme to do that and it just shows you the various browsers and prefixes that are available. Uh, it is on by default. You can leave it on. If you notice you have problems viewing your website when you're viewing it from a mobile device, you can turn the setting off and then you can try again. And if it resolves the issue, you know that's the cause. The next setting is to remove the UTF-8 char set from your .htaccess file. And it's only necessary if you see any bizarre characters or punctuation isn't appearing as it should. You might see uh, the euro sign where it should have an apostrophe for instance. So you would want to check that box if you noticed anything like that. Next we can choose to clear all cache files when a postal page is published or updated. It's optional to have that on. It will just mean that anytime you publish or update a post, it'll clear your cache for you. So if you're 
doing a lot of editing on already published pieces, you should probably consider leaving that off, otherwise it could just generate additional load for your server. Now you can choose to initiate extra home page checks. As it mentions, it can occasionally stop the home page caching. It is very rare that this will happen though, and it's worth turning on, I think. So my recommendation is to turn that on, as is the plugins. The next setting is to only refresh the current page when comments are made. So if you've got a post that doesn't have many comments, you can choose to only have that page update in the cache when there are new comments on it. It's not necessarily recommended, but it's not not recommended either. Uh, again, it's one of those things you can choose to put on. I mean, you can enable that and then you can run different speed tests on your website, such as you know Google PageSpeed or Yahoo's Why Slow to see if it makes any difference to your speed, but the gains from that will be minimal at best. You can then choose to list the newest cached pages on this page. If you just like to see what's going on, you can definitely do that. It's just kind of interesting, I think, but it certainly won't boost performance. Uh, the next option we have is to enable course file locking. You don't really need it, but if you have an extremely underpowered server, it can be advantageous. As it does note though, it may cause your server to lock up although in very rare cases. And just the last setting for the advanced options here is to enable late initialization. So what will happen is the cache files will only display after WordPress is loaded and it's really only useful in the instance that you're using legacy caching. So for most people, it's best to leave this one off. You've also got a do not cache page secret key and basically what you can do is just add that to any pages that you don't want cached. So if you want to view your website with fresh content, you can just add that string to the end of your URL, as we can see here. Those are all the advanced settings for caching, and now it's time to move on to expiry time and garbage collection. So you can set a cache timeout here as well. It's, it's always in seconds, and it's currently at 1800 seconds, which is 30 minutes. It's okay, and you can tweak it up or down. Uh, you may wish to tweak it up if you don't publish very often, or your site is generally static in most regards. And the next settings we have are for how long should cached pages remain fresh. So you can choose to set it to zero to disable garbage collection, but the default is 3600 seconds. And if you just go down here, it's currently scheduled to 600 seconds, so we can change that there. Uh, alternatively, you can use a clock and choose to do it on an interval of once hourly, twice daily, or once daily. For most people though, just leaving the timer set to 3600 is absolutely fine. And the final setting regarding garbage collection is you can actually request an email when garbage collection runs. You can do that in the instance such that if you have a very high traffic website and it's crashing at certain times, it may be when the server is trying to perform garbage collection. So you can turn emails on and then if you look at the time you got the email and then the time that your server may have gone down, you can reasonably deduce that that may be the cause. So it's optional, but for troubleshooting, it's very useful. Finally, we can choose the accepted file names and rejected URLs. So this is about not caching certain pages. So basically you can just choose single pages or single post pages, front page, the home page, archives, the feeds, the search and author pages as well. It's mostly safe to just leave all of these cached if there are any in particular that you would like to not cache, this is where you would do those settings. So when you actually go through here and modify any settings, what you need to do is do it section by section. So we've made some changes to the very first section, the, the prominent caching uh, settings there. So we just click update status now. As you can see, it says the rewrite rules required by this plugin haven't changed or are missing. Scroll down to the advanced settings page and click the update mod rewrite rules button. So we can do that right now. So we scroll down and here we see mod rewrite rules. So we need to basically put all of these into the HD access file. We can edit those by uh, making these changes ourselves. Um, but we can scroll down and just, we should be able to tick that. And in doing so, it'll actually make those changes for us. And it goes green to indicate that it's all been taken care of. Next, we can change the expiry time and garbage collection settings as we did before. So We'll just change that timer and set it to 3600 as we did before and definitely enable emails for this and we can just change that expiration and that's been updated. 
And that's all the changes that we need to make now because we didn't actually make any changes here, so we don't need to save that. But that should hopefully give you an idea of how you can use WP Supercache on your website. It can definitely help drastically speed up your website and moreover, can definitely help your server cope in times of extreme load. If you have any questions about caching or WP Supercache, please ask in the comments below.